because it's important to me that everyone is in their comfort zone. Yeah? So I want you to be comfortable during this lesson. I don't want people to be, to be lost. Yeah? So that's very important. Um, if you are new and you have never done this before, uh, who is completely new and has never done this before? Anyone? Singing school dance, singing school No, uh, sorry, singing sacred part, oh. ever. Anyone? No, so no one is completely new, that's great. So uh, I want to explain to you a little bit about this weird thing that is sacred harp singing. Uh, Philippe was explaining to me today how the people in France don't have a, a good box to put this in. It's mm -hmm. not a choir, it's not uh, a religion, you know, my God. It's not really anything that was easily classified in France, yeah? So uh, it's a musical tradition in America, and it's, um, it is a sac so sacred folk tradition. And you know what, it's sort of, I think a little bit, it reminds me a tiny bit, maybe, of um, La Polyphonie Corse. So those guys just get together and sing when they want to, mm -hmm. and they don't, sometimes they perform, sometimes it's just for them, right. yeah? So it's a little bit like that. Um, in America, it is certainly a live tradition. So, une tradition vivante, uh, which has uh, come to us from the 18th century, 19th century. And it is made up in the American South, that is the place where it really is still the most practiced, it is made up of a lot of singing families. So you have all day singings in little churches in Georgia and Alabama, which are family singings, like a family reunion, everyone gets together once a year, has a singing, you get to see people and all of that. And these family singings uh, still go on today, and some of them are very, very good. And if you ever want a recommendation of a good singing to go to, where you can experience the real, live, old tradition, speak to me, because I know some good singings to go to. I was just in the South um, two weeks ago. So I'm American, I'm, I come from the American South originally but I've lived in Europe for 23 years, yeah? So I consider myself the ambassador for Europe to America, and the ambassador from America to the European Sacred Harp singers. Sacred Harp is like, to me, is like the Zen, Buddhist Zen tea ceremony. Everyone can participate, and everyone can get something from it. But if you start, you think, oh, that's very interesting, I like that, maybe I will do it again. Then you might do it for a while. So you might go once a month for a year, and then you will say, oh my god, it's so complicated to know all these things, how will I ever learn it? And then after two years or three years, you will say, okay, now I'm a master of the Japanese Buddhist tea ceremony. And if you do it for another three years, then you'll say, I still have a lot to learn, yeah? So that's a sacred heart, it's like that. The more you do it, and the more you observe, the more you will learn. And you find out there are things that you can always, you can never stop learning, yeah? So from the beginner's class, to a class that you might have for people who've been doing it for 10 years, there's always, you can always fill up the time. You can always speak for an hour or two about some kind of action, you know, some practice of sacred heart. So today what I'm going to start with is a, a little bit of practicing on uh, sight reading. So reading the notes, yeah. We want to practice that because it is a, an important skill to have to sing, to be able to read the notes so that you don't have to learn by ear. If you can read the notes, then that opens the entire book to you, everything. And if you have to learn it by ear, how many songs can you learn by ear in an evening? 
maybe two. If you read the notes, you can sing 20 songs that you don't know. So let's practice a little bit on this. And I have some ideas about how to get everyone quickly up to speed on this. If you will turn around, so you have all sung this before, so you all know this, these shapes, the fa, so, la, mi, and you know the scale. So let's just sing the scale together. Fa, so, la, fa, so, la, mi, fa, fa, mi, la, so, fa, la, so, fa. Is everyone with me so far? Yeah? Okay. Right. Fa, attention and I want you to follow as quickly as you can stay with me if you can this is going to push you slightly out of your comfort zone perhaps but the reason that I say uh, comfort zone and push you slightly out of your comfort zone you may know if you are teachers some of you might be teachers you may know that uh, for pedagogical purposes, students, children, or adults will learn better if they are forced to make mistakes. So making mistakes is the learning process, basically. Yeah? So the learning process requires you to be slightly out of your comfort zone, but only slightly, yeah? So if you're completely lost, Please signal it. Okay? <laughs> right, so here we go. Oh, so sing it as it's happening, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like in en temps réel, right? So you want to be able to do it in real time. So let's do a little, a little bit more of this, and then we're going to sing a song, yeah? Mm -hmm. Time. 
So that's almost the way you would be singing if you were singing off the page, yeah? So this practice is it's a bit boring and also a bit taxing on the mind, but it is a way of training yourself. If you can do this frequently, and if you have, like if you do this in Paris with new singers, you will be surprised they will actually learn to read quickly because their minds will be trained already to move quickly along, yeah? Uh, when you read a word in French or in English, or if you read a sentence, it's better to say a sentence, une phrase. So if you read, read a sentence, you're not looking at each individual letter. You are looking at the chunk, the word. So you see on the, the page something like, uh, Uh, club. So you see those words, you see all of that almost at, at once, right? You don't have to think about I, L, blank, S, E, blank, P, E, U, T, right? So that, is that can be translated to music, and you can read music in the same way. Yeah? So if you see the music as um, words, not just one note, not just one letter, but words. So the musical words. So here is a song. Let's practice this song. You probably already know it, but let's practice it anyway. Ah, so 